Happy Easter. Welcome to this week's offering of prayers and readings and a reflection to help us celebrate this great feast day, Easter Day. Alleluia! Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Normally today we would light the Paschal candle, the Easter candle, a brand new candle for this coming year. And so we're now going to light our candle. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Now we pray our collect for this day. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open. In our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to have the Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. The words will be on the screen if you'd like to sing along. Um, and it's also going to be accompanied by some photos um, from the garden this week. One of the things that I love about Easter at this time of year is that the garden is looking so lovely. The flowers are bursting forth and it's that real sense of reminder of new life. So Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Gospel reading for today from John's Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb 
and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she taught two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today we celebrate that Jesus is alive. We celebrate that death on the cross was not the end, for Jesus triumphed over death and rose again. And this is the good news of our faith, that at Easter tears are turned into joy, despair is turned into hope, fear is turned into boldness, doubt is turned into trust. We see this in Mary as she goes to the tomb to minister to Jesus' body. She's full of tears, despair, fear and doubt because her beloved Jesus has died. Yet soon all that changed as she finally understood that the man she thought to be the gardener was indeed Jesus. And filled with joy, hope, boldness and trust, she went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. There are many other accounts in the Gospel of Jesus appearing to his friends in which we see the same thing happening. That once they realised that Jesus was really alive, they could rejoice and spread the good news that Christ had not been defeated but had won the victory. However, it often took some time before they realised the truth of what they were seeing and hearing. In their grief, it wasn't easy for them to see that things were better than they thought. Now, there's a story about the Battle of Waterloo which reminds me how this is so often the case. Napoleon had gathered his troops together and war spread across Europe. The British army under Wellington landed in Belgium and prepared to fight in a small village in Belgium called Waterloo. There was no way of communicating the news to England other than by semaphore. And day by day, a man was perched up in the tower of Winchester Cathedral, watching for news. On a misty day, the watcher received a message. Wellington defeated. The mist came down, and sadness filled Winchester. 
The watcher stayed at the post, and eventually the lift would lift the mist lifted. The message was repeated. Wellington defeated. But this time there were two more words, and they made such a difference. Wellington defeated the French. The assumed defeat was actually a victory. The message spread to London, and bells rang out as everyone realised that the battle had been won. The message, which seemed one of defeat, was in fact the start of the news of victory. On Easter Day, as we look back to Good Friday, we can see that Jesus' death on the cross was not a defeat, but was the start of the news of victory. The joy of the resurrection is that we can proclaim: death is conquered; we are free. Christ has won the victory. However, it seems a little strange celebrating freedom when our world is in the grip of pandemic and our freedoms have been significantly curtailed. But the message of Easter is that there is hope. That despite the despair, the tears, the fear, and the doubt that we may fear at this time. We can place our trust in Jesus, and find in Him joy and hope and boldness and trust to empower us each day and help us to look to the future. We saw just those things in the message that the Queen gave to us last Sunday. We will succeed, and that success will belong to every one of us. We should take comfort that while we may still have more to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our family again. We will meet again. This Easter day, may we each be comforted by the knowledge that our risen Lord is alive, and in Him we are free to live with hope in our hearts. That at this time of trial will end, and we will meet again, and in Him we are free to live with endless hope. Amen. We're now going to listen to some of the children from St Martin's and St Andrews with our prayers. We pray for our churches around the world celebrating Easter today. We pray for St Andrews and St Martin's churches in Charleston. Help us to share the good news of Easter. We pray that the peace of the risen Jesus will fill all parts of our world. Help those who are scared and worried. We, we pray for, for all those who are unwell at this time, especially all of those ill with the coronavirus. Please heal the sick and give them hope. We pray for our homes and our communities at this difficult time. Thank you for all those working so hard to keep us safe. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So I hope that you have found today helpful. I hope that you are able to celebrate a good Easter. Maybe not the Easter you'd hoped and dreamed of, but an Easter in which you know that the risen Lord is with you. But remember, Easter isn't just a day. We have 50 days of Easter to celebrate and hopefully by the end of that time we may be back in church but whatever I hope that you will have strength in your hearts for this coming week and the weeks ahead and so to end our blessing God the Father by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>